everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on Bob Radio in association with 24 Flicks. Also in association and courtesy of KCHF TV from Albuquerque, New Mexico, TV 11. We have a special guest on the Maurice Brown Comedy Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two women of God that have created an entertainment ministry that combines humorous skits, plays, and contemporary music to minister to God's people. They've been around for nine years and travel and perform Christ-based skits at Christian conferences, festivals, coffee houses, you name it. They even minister in some places where people dare not go, oh boy and oh my, and are leaving with those places, uh, leaving those places with a good, strong message about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, please welcome Rhonda Weeks and Mickey Kramer of Women on Fire Ministries. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hey, Maurice. How are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> we want to get, every, get everybody to straight off the bat. I'm Rhonda, and this is Mickey. <laughs> it's good to meet you guys, and you guys are from... from some former stomping grounds of mine in Maryland. I lived in the uh, DMV for almost 28 years, and my wife and I relocated to Austin, Texas. Howdy. Um, Hi. So, yeah, we're, we're having a lot of fun out here. But Maryland, I miss Maryland. Had a lot of fun when I was living in that area. And uh, good to see you guys. Welcome to the show. Good Aww. to see you. I bet you don't miss our winter weather. Uh, that I don't miss. I'll tell you right now, you know, that the, the coldest it gets typically in Texas is like maybe 58, 55. I don't and feel bad so, at all. Yeah, I, I, I do not miss the cold. I'll tell you, the winters can be fairly brutal in, in the DMV area from time to time. So, uh, no, I definitely don't miss that. Well, guys, look, welcome to the show. You've been together for about nine years. Uh, tell us uh, about Women on Fire Ministries and how you formed formed this tremendous duo. Well, I'm going to let you. Uh, I'm going to let Mickey tell how God brought us together, if you don't mind. Okay. okay. Well, Maurice, um, really, it was a God thing. Uh, we met at a recovery meeting. And it was certainly by chance. Um, I was in the meeting and uh, this new person came in, had never seen this new person before. She was not one of the church goers, uh, you uh -huh. know, who was regular at the church. Um, so I thought, well, who is this woman coming into our meeting? Um, but she was in our group. And when she shared, I really was drawn to what she shared, how she shared, and I thought, wow, this woman's got it going on. I really like her. But, you know, at that time, I was quite busy. Uh, and I let everybody in the group know that. Um, but as the group progressed, I just felt the drawing. Like the Holy Spirit was just, get her. You know, go after her. Everything, when she spoke, it just draw. she drew me in. So okay. finally, I was like, I had to get my nerve up. And I went up to her and I was like, uh, Rhonda. Um, would you like to go out for a coffee with me? You know, it's like asking somebody out on a date. It feels so uncomfortable. And I was stuttering over my words. Um, I was like, well, I, I'm not drinking coffee right now. I can only have tea. But uh, if you go out, you know, you can have coffee. Uh, but she did say yes. And that was a beautiful thing because when she said yes, and we got together that first night that we got together, um, I just happened to say, I wonder what God has in store for us for ministry. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, but uh, three months later, mm -hmm. we had our first ministry event and Women on Fire Ministries was formed. And we've been together ever since. And the Lord has just brought us stronger and closer together. And we're just committed to what we are into with the Lord leading us. It's amazing. You know, I think it's been a beautiful thing having a, a ministry partner. So you're not out there alone. You know, we, we've experienced some things in ministry that we didn't think went on behind the scenes in ministry, but okay. because God, God brought us together as friends first, we have that foundation of friendship. 
So no matter what we have faced, you know, what we've encountered, I always knew that she had my back and she had mine. So it really was a beautiful thing. But I think like Mickey said, God was actually uh, trying to bring us together for about three months, but we both had a lot going on in our personal lives at the time. But the Holy Spirit just kept drawing us in stronger and stronger and stronger. And I, I think we both knew that there was a mini ministry connection. We just had to have the courage to step out on faith and do that. Yes. Yes. And, you know, it, it, it's amazing how you guys uh, began there. But, I mean, your, your spirit's connected. You both have a love for the Lord. And, you know, in the entertainment business, as Christian representatives, whether some people pronounce the fact, hey, I'm a Christian actor, I'm a Christian comedian, director, yada, 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 or just I'm a comedian, I'm an actor, whatever. As Christians in this world, you know, we, we have a big job. You know, we've got to make sure that we're not only representing Christ in the way that he should be represented, you know, but we, we need to make sure that we're aiming to get people saved in what we do. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the great commission. I mean, in, in everything yeah. that we do, we've got to be Christ minded and Christ centered, because I'll tell you right now, you get in this business of entertainment. It's easy to get a big head. It's easy <laughs> to get conceited. It's easy to forget about what the real mission is because the real mission isn't isn't me and it isn't you. It's Christ. Yes. <laughs> this this flesh can rise up and get in the way. And as you alluded to a moment or two ago, Rhonda, about, you know, you kind of surprised about what actually happens behind <laughs> closed doors in ministry. You know, it, it can mm -hmm. get, you know, murky and, and convoluted and confused and misdirected back there. So. We have a big job and, and entertainment is a is a pretty big mountain when it comes to pride and overcoming that, you know, uh, that desire to be loved and applauded and lauded and all those different things. You, you constantly and I tell you what, if we don't do it, God will make sure he does it yes. <laughs> to, to keep us and, humble. Yes. And, you know, Maurice, this is something else that I just so adore um, having a ministry partner. I don't know that I would have ever done anything on my own. Yeah. I really, this is just who I am and how I'm made. And the thing is, God knows how we're made, right? right. So he knows the desires of our hearts. He knows how he formed us. So he knows us. And mm -hmm. I really, truly believe he gave me a Rhonda. He, we go out two by two. We do this together. Uh, we worked on our friendship first. We went out to um we got together once a week since we nine years ago we started and we still go out every week because it's friendship first and from that is our ministry we are sisters in christ and so yes. that foundation has to be firm and everything else comes from that so we pray together you know we are we're bound together and I think that's so important. And then Rhonda's strengths, you know, she has these beautiful strengths and maybe they're my, I have some weaknesses there and maybe my strengths, I have some strengths and maybe Rhonda has some different places. And so together, like iron sharpens iron. So it's just a marvelous thing. I really so appreciate having a ministry partner. You know, we, it, it has actually been prophesied to us twice within the last couple of months. I'd say the last six months, it had been prophesied twice to us from two different prophets. God keeps speaking the word humble to us, that okay. he, want, he wants to stay humble. The other word we keep getting uh, is um, unity. So Mickey and I pray often that, that you know, we would be united as we go out. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on BOG Radio in association with 24 Flicks, talking with Rhonda Weeks and Mickey Kramer of Women on Fire Ministries out of the great state of Maryland. You, you know, you guys were talking about um, <laughs> performing in some places that maybe some dare not go. As Christian comedians, and some Christian comedians have no problem going into secular uh, spaces. I am one of those. I have no problem doing that. Uh, but, you know, when you get into those spaces, then, you know, you have a, a big hill to climb and to overcome. What is it like for Women on Fire Ministries when, when they are performing in those places that people dare not go? 
<laughs> well, I, I actually love going to places where where people dare not go because I, I think we're breaking down a lot of walls. A lot of yeah. people that are I, one of the things that I love about our ministry is I think we appeal to people that wouldn't, quote unquote, go to church. Right. Uh, yeah. But they'll come out. To, we'll, we'll tell you about these coffee table groups that we do in a minute. But we've got people that will come and hear a skit that might necessarily feel comfortable going to church. It's it's a lot less intimidating, you know, but a lot of people have preconceived motion, notions about what a Christian Christian is, about what Christianity is. And when they hear our skits, you know, I, I think at first they're not quite because it's a, it's certainly a new way to minister. There aren't a whole lot of, you know, Christian skit partnerships mm -hmm. and, and ministries out there. So at first, when we step up, I think they wonder like, what, you know, what's this all about? And then once we just get real, our skits are really real, you know, and there's a lot of what goes on in our friendship in those skits, too. So that gives you a little a little taste of what goes on in our friendship, especially when we travel. We have a couple driving skits that we do that are hilarious. And it's a lot of situations that Mickey and I have found ourselves in in our travels for ministry. But I think uh, when people start laughing, we they forget oftentimes that we are a Christian ministry and we show that. You know, Christians aren't stuffy. We have the joy of the Lord, right? And yeah. uh, we figured out a long time ago that humor is a great way to connect with other people, no matter what their beliefs are. But while they're laughing with us and not at us, but with us, you know, we are leaving them with a good, strong message about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. And then also, um, we've actually gotten people who have come up to us and it may be years later. And um, God in a box, for instance, we have a person that's come up to us and said, you know, every time I see a box, I think about God in a box skit. <laughs> and there was another person on um, a skit that we did about coffee. And they said, every time I see coffee, I think about this coffee skit. That's the impact, right? It's lasting. It's lasting. So the thing is, the Holy Spirit is taking these simple skits and he's drilling into the hearts and the minds of individuals a message that they are not forgetting. And that is so powerful. That's not Mickey and Rhonda. That's the Holy Spirit doing his work. We're just the vessels that he's choosing to use at this particular time in that venue. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. A couple of years ago, we were at a huge Christian conference in Virginia Beach and we did our God in a Box skit. And like Mickey said, I think six months later, we went back to a completely different conference. And a lady said, you ladies are the one that did that God in a Box, right? And we were like, yeah. And she said, you know, every time I look at a box, I ask myself, am I putting God in a box? And I thought she gets it. Like you can't get better than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the one thing about the craft of comedy is if you're funny, no one no one cares if you're using profanity, if you're being vulgar or whatever it is you're doing. Funny is the key. And mm -hmm. uh, once okay. you can get people to genuinely laugh at what you're doing, whatever the message is that you're trying to convey, you'll convey it. Uh, but on our end, you know, we're working for the Holy Spirit here. So you know, our message overrides any other message. Yes. <laughs> you see, I mean, so we have to trust the Holy Ghost when we're out there that we're going to get the job done. And it's all about being funny. And it comes. I, I love what you guys are saying about people coming back to you later and saying, I, I can tell you, I've been at shows. I have Christian comedy friends that have been at secular shows. And someone after the performance will come up to us and say, hey, look, I really appreciate you not using any profanity. And, and you, you know, that was really good. And you know what? I didn't even realize you weren't using profanity. And then Don mm -hmm. me, wow, this guy's clean. Thank you. You know, those kind of comments, yeah. you know, have happened in stand up comedy for 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 our Christian brethren. And that's what you have to do. And, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll use an analogy real quick. And I'll turn it right back over to you guys. But, you know, Michael Jordan made an, an, an analogy about the early years and the later years. And the later years, that's when the craftsmanship of his his uh, abilities came forward. It wasn't so much about trying to force the issue, force this, force that. You just learn how to do this thing over time. You know, mm -hmm. you have to go through a lot of uncomfortable experiences in this craft. <laughs> I mean, you know, absolutely. 
You know, one of the things I one of the things I love uh, about our skits, we mentioned God in a Box, but we do have a lot of props because we yeah. figured out some people are visual learners, and yeah. and the coffee skit Mickey was talking about, that's actually a, an acronym that we use. Christ Christ offers forgiveness for everyone everywhere, and a man saw that and he said, you know, every time I go into Costco and I see a huge canister of coffee, I think Christ offers forgiveness for everyone everywhere. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Go ahead, Mickey. Well, I just wanted to mention, you know, Maurice, when we even step up, right? So I'm a little more on the, um, well, I'm a little more on the petite side, right? Okay. <laughs> Rhonda's a little um, taller than myself. Okay. So even, you know, uh, we look a little different, right? She's tall and blonde and, you know, it's like, ooh, uh, here I am. I have purple. You never know what color hair I'm going to have, actually. You know, it could be purple today. <laughs> okay. You just don't know, right? It's always a surprise. Um, but we just, you know, there's something there's something there, right? So right there, it's a draw. So we've caught some attention that way. But it's really what that shows is it, it, Christians aren't put in a box even, mm -hmm. right? We don't, we don't give the message that you have to look a certain way, be mm -hmm. a certain way mm -hmm. to be a Christian. And I think right. that's an important message mm -hmm. as well. And I remember one time we were doing a skit for these young, with these young children. And we, after each skit, sometimes we'll share a little message. So we were asking the kids, hey, well, what, what is this? So we're trying to get to this skit is about Jesus, right? <laughs> so we say, well, what you, how did you get to about this skit? What is this about? And he's like, your hair. <laughs> no, your shoes. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, all these different things that they're visually seeing. But but even so, we got to Jesus. The children did get to Jesus. <laughs> but the thing, the point is, it's it's the whole thing. It's not just one thing. It's the humor. It's the look. It's a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's a little bit of everything. I had an opportunity to do a stand up show for high school once. You know, I'd never done stand up for high school. This young lady found my website and uh, asked me to do the show, but she couldn't pay me anything. It was for a, it was a cancer fundraiser they were having at their high school. And I. I, and I did it, you know, for, for nothing, simply because it was for cancer. And I, said, and I did it. But I'd never gone into that world of stand up with with kids, with high school kids. And I just trusted the Holy Spirit, went in there and did extremely well. You know, and because <laughs> I, I I mean, this is a faith thing, what, what we do as well. Yeah. We, we step into situations sometimes and it's like we got to remember we have a partner. He's called the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's right. That's right. And so yeah. we don't ever have to worry about going into anything alone, you know. And and so it's 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 hugely important in what we do. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the ups and downs of comedy and what we face. <laughs> and uh, also, we're going to talk a little bit more about God in, in a box a little bit later on in the show. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on Bog Radio, talking with Rhonda Weeks and Mickey Kramer of Women on Fire Ministries. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we we have a common friend by the name of Anthony Hackett, director Anthony Hackett, who has a film out now called The Perfect Christmas. And it's uh, oh, it opened in, in theaters nationwide on December 8th and, and just found out that Anthony's been given a, an additional week. It did so well on the opening weekend. Um, so you, you got to love that. You got to love. And you guys are associated with this, this magnificent film, The uh, the Perfect Christmas. My wife and I had an opportunity to see it. Tell us a little bit about your involvement in the film. That's right. Well, we actually have a producer and associate producer credits of it. Did you see our, our Women on Fire Ministries logo at the end? I did. You did. Yeah, yeah I yeah. did. So we have, Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I actually met Anthony about two years ago. I was cast. Uh, he was hired by a huge local uh, church here, like a, a mega church, if you will, to do a commercial that I couldn't believe this church put out this money to do a, for a commercial just for them. It was only going to be shown on their huge screens for like a week leading up to the pastor doing it, uh, 
a teaching on stewardship. So you know Anthony's mind. He, he put together the right actors for the right parts. And we did this hilarious commercial about stewardship, if you can be funny about stewardship. And Anthony is the only director that could have me twerk in church. And yes, he did have me twerk in church. I can so believe we, it. we worked. I can believe it. Yeah. We, so we worked, uh, we worked together and it was one of the most uh, creative experiences I ever had because nothing was written. Everything was ad libbed. And uh, Michael J. Patterson was in that. He played, he played the pastor. I know that you're familiar with that. Yes. So from us, from our working relationship two years ago, we kept in touch just like everybody in the industry does. And, um, I found out he was doing this movie, The Perfect Christmas. He actually had a movie out before this called Hope Lives. Are you aware of that? Yes. Yeah, and that movie won all the film festivals. And I think from uh, the popularity and and the funds that were raised from that film, he was able to to a little bit a little bit more easily make this movie, The Perfect Christmas. And um, yeah, the, the opportunity came up. He just asked if you know we'd like to be a part of it. And yeah, so we have a, a producer and associate producer correct credits in the film. Well, and if you, I, so if you watch, you see our name scroll across the screen and you'll see our Women on Fire Ministries logo. So it's amazing. I, we saw it uh, opening night Friday. And then okay. my husband and I my husband and I went on date night on Sunday and I ran into Anthony and his daughter Mimi there at the theater. And it was it was packed on Sunday night. Was it packed when you were there? Well, now we were my wife and I are, are in Texas. So we were in Lockhart. We went we had to travel to Lockhart to see the film at uh, hometown uh, cinemas. So okay, we, had and a little it, bit, we had a little bit of a drive too. I think we drove about 40 minutes uh, to Laurel, Maryland to go see it. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, I would just have to honestly say out in Texas, it, it wasn't, it wasn't packed. The, the, the showing we went to was in the evening on a Sunday night. And uh, most people are probably going to work the next day. And it was it was a ways out from Austin. I actually wouldn't say a ways. I was probably about half hour, 45 minutes from Austin, which was a nice date night for my wife and I. We went out, <laughs> had a great time. Great film. It was an excellent film. We enjoyed it immensely. And what I want to do is play the trailer for everyone out there just so you can get an idea of what. The perfect Christmas is like, and it, again, it's been extended for another week in theaters nationwide. Here it is, folks. The trailer, The Perfect Christmas, directed by Anthony Hackett. I don't know about you, but I think you like balsa, so look at my back and watch this salsa! <laughs> On Christmas Eve, the perfect family is in store for a wild ride. There's no such thing as Santa. Yes, it is. No, there's not. Will the Santa talk? Really, Michael? What? I want this little girl thinking some old chubby fat white man sliding down our chimney at night. <laughs> Loving in laws. Dad! Hey, Dad. Christmas romance. If you were a Transformer, you'd be Optimus Prime. How old is that boy? Oh, he's 20. Well, my birthday's until tomorrow, so technically, I'm still 19. Oh, my goodness. A little dancing. Oh, get it, Mimi. Yes, girl. I don't like it. I don't like none of it, okay? Too much hips. I don't like it. It's a traditional piece. What's wrong with it? You got the girl looking like a side piece right now. What's a side piece? Memorable moments. Santa is as real as your grandmother hair. Excuse me. My hair is very real. <laughs> really, but. Girl, let's go. Boys, behave. <laughs> And of course, some drama. So that's how you raise your child to go steal from someone? Mommy's outside about to get into a fight with some man in the car. Oh snap! Daddy, you coming too? It's about to go down. Make this Christmas. The reason for the season is Jesus. And what if it isn't about forcing him back into Christmas? But appreciating that he's always been there. The perfect Christmas? <laughs> Strap in for the ride and join the perfects this holiday season to experience their world of faith, family, and some holiday fun. The perfect Christmas. That line was so funny. It's so bad. I had to tell you all. 
In theaters, December 8th. Yes, yes, a very, <laughs> a very, very funny film. You know, that's the thing about it. Anthony loves to crack jokes. And I, I was I was telling my husband on Sunday that his wife must be very patient because he never stops. He no. never stops cracking jokes. The guy is just a hundred miles per hour all the time. And That's right. uh, he's he's just got tons of energy. He's he's very my 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 wife actually thinks he could be a stand up comedian if he wanted to. She's told him that before. But no, he he loves to crack jokes, and it was a very fun. It was really cool to see Cameron Arnett. I, I interviewed Cameron uh, last week, and it was it was really cool to see him in in somewhat of a comedic role. You know, a lighter side of Cameron. Um, yeah, I've, she, I've never ha I've never heard him uh, use the accent before. And, and that's his native uh, tongue as well. I mean, <laughs> well, his parents are are Haitian, and he told me that he's really never been someone that uh, was actually a, a user of the dialect, as it were. But just the fact that his parents are, he, he leaned on her to get the accent. But uh, Gigi Orsillo, who's a, a, also a good friend of mine that was his sleeper agent with Leland Klassen, stand-up comedian Leland Klassen, uh, very funny. Robert Abaya, very funny in that film. Uh, it, it, it was really, really uh, entertaining. I highly advise you folks this weekend yeah. to make that a part of your schedule. If you want to have a good uh, good date night with your wife or take the family out, hook up with some friends, uh, it, it, go see The Perfect Christmas. If you're Christian, you got to support faith-based films. We've yeah. got to start supporting each other. We've Absolutely. got it. And I, I got to say this too, because I'm going to my soapbox real quick and I'm going to get off, but I got to say this too. In this business of Christian filmmaking, or whatever it is in entertainment that's faith based or Christian, we got to start supporting each other. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. we're, we're we're really quick to go out and see a secular film. You know, mm -hmm. if I, if it's Robert De Niro, if it's Denzel Washington, if it's you know whoever, we'll we don't have to think twice about it. We we should be more inclined to support yeah. faith based programming. I absolutely agree. Mickey and I are huge supporters of all types of Christians in media. Yeah, we need yeah. more. Yeah, we, we, we need way more of it. I said this once on a prior program where if you look at the the low budgeting in a lot of Christian films, you know, not able to to catch up to Hollywood. I mean, not even close. If you really the I think the the finances are available. Mm -hmm. Finally. Yeah. I think the studios have finally figure out there's money to be made, that there's a, a huge population of Christians that are willing to go spend their money to go see Christian entertainment. Yeah. It, it, there's no there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so as I say that, what I want to do next, because you guys did a skit. So, I, yeah, I wanted to play a skit that you guys did. Uh, you guys have done many skits. But this one in particular, I, I found to be pretty entertaining. And it's we've been talking about God in a box. So we're going to let it rip and we'll come back and talk about it. Perfect. Thank you. I saw you pulled over on the side of the road with that cop. What happened? Yeah, he got me going 20 over in a school zone. <laughs> well, I guess I wasn't paying attention. Well, why would you do that? That's crazy. Well. Obviously, I was in a hurry. Wow, you must have got a huge ticket for that one. Oh, nah. <laughs> Girl, I had one of these little babies right here. Well, what's that? Well, this. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my God in a box. What? I just <laughs> opened the lid and God takes care of all my little problems. <laughs> Before it was over, God had the cop apologizing for pulling me over. <laughs> this little thing works every time. Seriously, I'm surprised that little thing even worked. Oh, girl, I am telling you what. This little thing works every time. What? That is the craziest thing I have ever heard. 
Ugh. No, it's not. This little thing works every time. Well, like last week when I had to go renew my driver's license. Okay. Oh, I get there. And the line was so long. Yeah. Oh, I started to get really frustrated. I bet. <laughs> so I reached into my purse pulled that little baby out and voila, I was moved to the front of the line. <laughs> now that's my God in a box for you. Mickey, God's not a magic lamp. Do you just pull him out whenever you want him to take care of all your little Mickey problems? <sighs> well, Rhonda, he doesn't just take care of all my little <laughs> Mickey problems. Honey, I have something extra special for those really big problems, too. And what is that exactly? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Let me show you. Okay. My jumbo got in a box. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, what? Now, I'll use this for all my, you know really big problems like what hmm i know like last month when i had jury duty okay oh, nobody likes jury duty right nope i mean seriously who has time for that right oh, so i get to the courthouse okay put my jumbo god in a box right up on that counter okay and the clerk tells me that court is canceled for the day because the electric <laughs> is out. <laughs> now that's my jumbo god in a box in action. <sighs> Mickey, God's not a genie in a bottle. Your wish is not his command. Do you just pull God out whenever you want him to fix things for you? No, <laughs> Rhonda, I am so much smarter than that. <laughs> Sometimes I close my little box okay. and I tuck him back inside my purse. Okay. Well, you know, <clears throat> for those things I um don't want God to see. What don't you want God to see? Oh, well, like the other day when <laughs> I was driving to work. Okay. And, well, somebody cut me off. Ooh. I mean, I almost wrecked my car. Woo. So I pulled up next to them what? and I gave them a piece of my mind. What? Well, <laughs> along with a few friendly gestures. Oh no. You know, just to make my point. No. But the whole time I had my little god in a box tucked safely away in my purse. So, God never knew. Mickey, God knows everything. You can't just tuck him away in a box and shove him in your purse and act like he doesn't know. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Rhonda. <laughs> God is always there when I need him. Yes, he is. But what about when you don't need him to do anything for you, Mickey? Is he in your life then? You need God all the time, not just when you want him to fix things for you. Rhonda, I just can't go walking all around <laughs> town with God exposed <laughs> everywhere. I mean, people would see that. Yeah, but isn't that what being a Christian is? God mm. wants a relationship with you and people need to see that. Huh. Well, I feel a little silly then. I mean, carrying around all these boxes. Ugh, girl, especially this big one. Yeah, I bet you do. But you know what, Mickey? You don't have to carry anything around with you. God's right here in your heart. He knows everything anyway. Nothing's a surprise to him. He's just waiting on you to call on his name and to ask him for help. I guess you're right. Hey. You know what? I wish I could stand here all day and talk to you, but I have got to get to work now because I have a day full of stressful meetings. Oh, a day full of stressful meetings? Yep, all day. 
Oh, wretched. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know just the thing. Here you go, Rhonda. You take this. Yes. And before yes. you know it, those meetings will be uh, postponed. Seriously? <laughs> I'm just kidding, oh. your girlfriend. Hey, but would you help me carry that box to the recycle bin? Gladly. I thought you'd <laughs> never ask. Come on, girl. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Rob DeWeeks and Mickey Kramer. You guys are hilarious. I love it. You, you know, oh, thank you. you know, the 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 reality is it's the, the skit's funny and so true at the same time, you know, laughing at what we really do, you know, but we try to pretend that we don't do that's exactly what we do. You know, exactly what we do. You know, that's a, and, yeah. and you know, God doesn't just show up, and, and and it's funny too because the skit brings out the fact that the only time we get quote unquote holy is when trouble hits. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. When we really get down to the prayer cloths and all that stuff when things get real. Right, you know? right, and truly, it is about that relationship, that constant contact. Right, maintaining yeah. that constant contact in everything and it can be difficult to do sometimes but you know in all things turning things over and um and we i don't want to put god in a box i don't want to just pull him out when the times get tough i mm -hmm. want to have a relationship i want to have i want he knows me intimately anyway i want to know him intimately as well and just be open to that and the leading of the holy spirit and really, I think the skit does show just the humor in it. And truly, I can revert back to that sometimes. I mean, yes. it's so, it can be easy to revert back to that. And it's a very good reminder that that is not where I want to live. Mm -hmm. No, no. And we, we have to constantly remind ourselves of that very thing because it's so easy to slip into that unconsciously. I mean, you just bam. Uh, over time, as you walk, like you said, uh, Mickey, consistently with Christ, you know, those kind those kind of negative tendencies slowly diminish. It takes a while because we've been doing it for so long. I mean, <laughs> yes. we've been doing the wrong thing for so long. It's muscle memory stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you have to check yourself. No, 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 no. That's you know, old that, me. That, that's that. what I love about our skits. That's really what I love about our skits. We sort of poke fun at things that we all do. Yeah. We all know yeah. we do. But we do it from a space of humor where there's no guilt or shame in it. <laughs> right. so that, that's that's one of the wonderful things that I love about going into places that people dare not go. Is, yes. you know, we're we're not ham. We're not Bible beating, you know, right. people in the head with with things. We're you know, we're not too serious. We're just poking fun at things that we all do. Yeah. No guilt, no shame. Mm -hmm. Just hey, bringing to light something that we all do, and uh, you know, encouraging people to try to do a little bit better, and encouraging ourselves to do yes. a little bit better as well along the way. Well, let's face it. I mean, what we do is therapeutic for the, for ourselves, the performer. You know, yes. it's it's therapeutic for us. It reminds us what we're doing and what we need to improve upon. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of my humor will be based on just things that, you know, I've done myself. And you just make <laughs> you just make light of it. And and yeah, it it's all about, you know, medicating your own issues as well as helping others. Because like you said, Rhonda, I mean, we're all going through the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> we're all we're all we're all going through the same thing if we're honest with ourselves, you know, and that's what I really like about the skit is just talking about the fact that, you know, hey, look, God saw that. Did you really think God didn't see you yeah. do that? <laughs> you know, so it's it's really funny uh, because we really think that it, it, uh, there's a, a an adage about the fact that, you know, when your boss is around, you're on your best behavior. And Susie turns the corner, you know, you go back to just kind of being a slouch at work. Well, you know, you never get that break with God. You know, yes. he's always watching you. Yes. yes. Yep. Absolutely. And, and we think that that third time he's not looking. Oh, please. You know, he's he's everywhere. His eyes are everywhere. And so, yeah, we got to remember that. 
we got to remember that. Very good skit, guys. That was hilarious. Very funny. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm impressed that you found that version. I don't know where you pulled that out from, but I was impressed with it. I was just looking at uh, all of your stuff, just trying to find some things. Uh, uh, look at <laughs> all the things you guys did. And I, I thought that was really good. I really liked that. And, you know, Maurice, uh, I want to give yeah. a shout out to my husband who okay. helped us with the box. Who, he has it lit for us now. We wanted a lighted box and he gave us a lighted box. So now um, when we get invited out, we can light our box and we have, and I just adore, you know, it has to be a little glitzy, a little glare. It's just not a little glittery and a little, you know, and lighted, um, yes. but we have a lighted box now and I just love it. <laughs> so. All right. Awesome. I, I, I think that's great. I really do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on Bog Radio, talking with Women on Fire Ministries out of Maryland, Rhonda Weeks and Mickey Kramer. Thanks a lot, guys, so much for being on the show. Good morning to everyone out there. We in this business of comedy face a lot of challenges. I want to ask you guys this. What is, what is it? Uh, what's the most challenging part about doing your skits in different places here, there, everywhere. What, what's been the most challenging part about doing your skits? You want to take that one? Um, I'll answer a few things. Um, and there are a few different things. So okay. I'll start with um, different places uh, because we do our skits for a variety. We are not just in one place. We're not in one um, venue, one certain set. We're okay. all over. So we're, okay. we could be in youth groups, we can be with adults, we can be in recovery groups. So it's a, a total one place, one week, one place, another week. So it's a, a variation. Um, okay. So it, it's definitely it can be um, children. You know, we might, it's a different feel. Adults is another feel. Um, but one of the difficulties can be, and you probably get this too, uh, but noise level, right? The phone yeah. goes off. Yeah, You know, the phone yeah. goes off in the middle of a skit unless we're really, you know, we have to really, I have to really be into my skit to know and not really hear somebody, hello, yeah, I'm watching the skit right now. Can I call you back? I'm like, yeah. hey, she'll call you back. Can you call them back? Because we're doing a skit right now. Yeah. You know, but those kind of things, people getting yeah. up to go to the restroom or just, you know, the water bottle dropping. I know one time we were doing a skit and um, it was for a youth group, but you know, our youth don't maybe look the same or I don't know. I could hardly tell they were youth because there was this guy sitting there and he took a jug, a gallon jug of tea and he started drinking his tea. And it just like got me a little off because I was like, is that a man? <laughs> Cause I thought we were yeah. supposed to be a youth group right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You know, those little things that just kind of, and if we are not rehearsed well, that could totally throw us off. Yeah. And yeah. so that is something that's very important. And with Rhonda and I, we take what we do very seriously and we rehearse a lot so that when those times come, I can have that thought and I won't lose my line. So I can be thinking about, is that a man over there with that cheat thing? Because <laughs> he looks like a man right now and I can still give the line. Yeah. Because yeah were that rehearsed. And I think that's important. And that is, and you know what? The other thing about that, Maurice, is that we're doing this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when we go out, we want to be professional and we don't, we don't care who we're ministering to. We are ministers of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. And we felt that we are bringing a message and we need to be tight. And so mm -hmm. that's really important to us. Um, so I know that's one of the challenges that yeah. we can face at times, just the difference in the in the individuals and the, the sound and that sort of thing. Do you have anything else? I do. I, I think that the most challenging thing is that every audience is different. Mm -hmm. So we'll go mm -hmm. back. We did, we did Creation Fest last year in Shirleyburg, Pennsylvania. They get like 22,000 people. So there's a lot of noise going on, a lot of mm -hmm. music, a lot of activities with 22,000 people, but every audience is different. We could go out and do God in a box and everybody's just, yeah, they're, they're so behind God in a box. And we're like, yeah, we really felt that. But then the very next night we could go to a Christian coffee house and do a skit to open for the band. And maybe we do God in a box and you can hear birds chirp, <laughs> but then we'll do our, 
but then we'll do our pray pal skit and that's the one that you know people the christian coffee houses are going crazy over and going nuts so just trying to read the audience because yeah. every audience is different i think that's yes. the the big challenge yeah and, and to that point just because people don't always laugh doesn't mean what I've learned. I feel like what I've learned is just because people don't always laugh doesn't mean they're not receiving. Yeah. Uh, certainly, you know, we prefer, I mean, it's helpful because that feeds us. I know if people are yeah. laughing and I hear that, but sometimes I'm up there and I don't hear the laugh because I'm so into what I'm doing. I, I yeah. can't even hear. It. And so I don't even know if they're laughing. And I might say to Rhonda when we're done, did they laugh? And she'll tell me, yes, they did, but I'm so into it. I don't hear. And then other times people will come up to us after and say, thank you. Thank you. That was so good. That was so funny. I really enjoyed that. That really spoke to me, even though it might not be out loud laughter. Right. And so what that tells me is the Holy Spirit is doing his work and everybody receives in a different way. So hundred percent. And I think when you're not doing really well is when people start having conversations. When people are yeah. talking and they've totally disregarded what you're doing, that's when you're bombing. But if you're <laughs> if if people are quiet, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not doing well. They're really paying attention to what you're saying. And 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 more often than not, they're actually liking it because I've had that happen before just by a couple of folks in the audience that looked catatonic. And then when it was <laughs> over, they were like, that was great. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you yes, thought that was right great. There. Okay. <laughs> so, right yeah, you, there. you can't always tell. And I like what you said, too, uh, also about distractions and everything, uh, depending upon how prepared you are, will determine how you react. I, I can tell you honestly, myself personally, just looking at video of myself or just re, re, rethinking what I just did, I'm so, I, 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 I'm so dialed in to what I'm doing. I've, I've literally become somebody else. Like, I don't even recognize myself when I'm doing stand up. I look at it, I go, wow, I, I look so composed. I look so <laughs> into whatever, because, you know, you're not feeling that. I say, I don't feel that as composed as I look. You, if you're really dialed in, that stuff's not going to bother you. Yes. Nope. Yes. You don't even you don't even notice it. Yes. No, you, you don't notice it. And I think uh, secular comedian and I'm going to get to this question because I, I love what what you just said what you both you guys just said there but i gotta ask you this real quick because we're, we're about to run out of time this is a great conversation some a bunch of other questions i wanted to ask i don't know if i'm gonna make it but i want to ask you this um what's it like in a bombing experience have you guys ever had that never well there was that one time <laughs> Well, I no, listen. No. Let, I got a better question. What is it like when it? Because we know as comedians, it's just part of the the landscape. It's going to happen. When it does, are you guys the type that can just flick it off, or does it take a couple of days to kind of get over it and get back at it? Okay, there was. Um, that is why I love having a ministry partner. Okay, and that's why God has just blessed me so much. Uh, there was a time we were learning a new skit. I felt really comfortable. I mean, I was on it, right? I knew the yeah. line. Um, but we got up on the stage, and I don't know what happened. Uh, we were, I guess, like third to midway through, and I just went blank. And I'm like, yeah. why yeah. am I blank right now? And I'm looking at Rhonda, and I'm like, I got nothing. I got <laughs> nothing right now, Rhonda. Sorry. I mean, and I did have nothing. Yeah. And it stopped. Um, that was the only time so far. Thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> and we just stopped it and we, you know, we, whatever, and we finished up and we got off and my ministry partner here Yeah. and yeah. she was so kind to me and she encouraged me. Now I'm somebody that has come up and am, uh, recovering from guilt and shame and some of those things, trauma. Okay. okay. And so 
that could be devastating to me. Yeah. But God and but the ministry partner who is very confident and who is very kind and who is very encouraging that can lift me up. Yes. Um, so I just have to brush that off. And she helps yeah. me to do that. Yeah. And truly, it's just like, meh, you know, it happens and it does happen. And I have to accept yeah. that, that that will happen. I, I gave it everything that I had. I did my best. And sometimes those things happen. And that's yeah. OK. It's not reflection of me. It was just a moment. Right. And, you know, Mickey, and again, it's part of the, the landscape, you know, and I think you just, you know, alluded to that. It's just it's going to happen. It does happen. Uh, and we got to keep motoring along. They're, they're just gonna, there are nights where you're not on it. You're not feeling it. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it's just not there. You know, and it's never the audience's fault. Sometimes, you know, some comedians anyway blame the audience and all. it's never the audience's fault. It's always the performer. And if you just go back and look at it, you can identify what you did that, you know, should have been or could have been better. Sometimes it's even self-induced. You know, a comedian yeah. will go, yeah, you know, you, you know, you shouldn't have done that. So <laughs> there's so many things that can trigger a bad show. And, and then you have to be able to recover from it. And, and just, I think it's just about being honest with yourself. If you're honest yes. with yourself, the quicker you get over it. Yes. yes. I, I was trying to think, I was trying to think, did it take us a while to get over that one? A couple days? You know, you were very kind. She was very <laughs> kind. She was just encouraging. I mean, as soon as it was over, she was so encouraging, right? From me, yeah, you know, I just had to give myself grace, mm-hmm. right? And that's the beautiful thing. God is full of love and mercy and grace. Yeah. And if he extended it to me, I need to extend it to myself. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it probably took us a couple, like a day or two or something. But I'll tell you what, we have never messed up that skit again. (laughs) Well, hey, I I I believe you. You know, we've got the 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 greatest consoling spirit in in the universe in the Holy Spirit. So it, he's right. going to be there to bring us back up and we'll be back on that horse ride and tall. No problem. It happens. And, and we keep moving. We, we have that advantage. We do have the Holy Spirit. And, and it's just it makes you stronger, too. When, mm-hmm. when you go through that, you know, it's a part of becoming better, bolder, more daring and certainly, you know, funnier at your craft. Uh, you, you just just endure it. Uh, absorb it. OK. All right. And you keep going after a while because not everybody's built like us, guys. You know, most people <laughs> can't do what we do. You got yeah. Mickey, you got to think about that, too. Most people can't even think about doing what we do. And yeah. so, you know what I mean? So if yeah. you do stumble a time or two or whatever, you get back up, you know, you're all the better for it, Mickey. Yes. And with, with a ministry partner, because we're a partnership yeah. and we know each other so well, it can simply be an I like. I can catch Rhonda's eyes yeah. and I'll know like, okay, she's out, she's out of it. She needs a line or whatever. <laughs> okay. So we can just, and she, the same with me. Mm-hmm. So we feed each other very well that way. And, and so that works so well, we're not out there alone. Mm-hmm. And that is a wonderful thing. Sometimes too, we're doing a skit and I feel like it's valuable to be open, uh, to be led by the Holy spirit. Sometimes we'll be doing a skit and, and we'll be on it and we'll, we'll be doing the lines just as scripted. And then all of a sudden we one of us will feel led of the Holy Spirit to go in a whole different direction with that skit. And you have to be confident in, in your partner to be able to follow with you because you know that, you know, if the Holy Spirit is leading you in a different direction, somebody is being ministered to in That's that right. room. And you've got to have confidence to just, you know, continue to move with it. Yeah. There, there's no question about it. Uh, my wife always tells me when I'm doing a show, I know when you've forgotten your next joke because you keep saying, you know, it's crazy. You know, it's really <laughs> crazy. You know what? You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Anyway, it, guys, it's been a great conversation. We got to get out of here. But before we do, how can fans follow Women on Fire Ministries by website or on social media? I, I think the easiest way to get in touch with us is follow us on our Facebook page. It's Women on Fire Ministries. And we our ministry actually has a number for bookings. And I can give you that. It is 443-603-7323. Okay. 
Sounds good. And and are you guys on Instagram? Uh, we we are not. No, we are okay. we are just on Facebook right now. And we have um, I guess we have a YouTube channel. Yes, we have a YouTube channel as well. Okay. Awesome. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on Bog Radio in association with 24 Flicks. We've been talking with Women on Fire Ministries out of Maryland. And if you're coming in at the very end and you're like, oh, Maurice, doggone it, I, I missed the interview. Well, not really, because you can always listen to it on Spotify, where all major podcasts are heard. And every Saturday night in Albuquerque, New Mexico, on KCHF TV, TV 11, you can watch uh, as well as listen the Maurice Brown Comedy Show on and with these two fine ladies out of Maryland. Uh, Women on Fire Ministries, every midnight on Saturday and again at 8 p.m. They love us out there. They just they just love us out there at Albuquerque. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to get out of there, out of here with that. It's been great talking to uh, my homies because I'm from the DMV. Area, <laughs> so these are my homies right here. There you um, go. <laughs> guys, I'm thanks lucky. so much uh, for hanging out with us. And God bless you. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and your families. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. much. It was Thank nice talking.